Okay, so then then they they just again explain the whole process through here until you get to V zero. Again, V zero is two neighbors that have already been color colored by color one, and at the very worst, V zero has um, delta minus two uh, neighbors at distance one, uh, with the exception of U and W, uh, that. Um, have already received uh, at the very worst delta minus two colors. So out of the delta, uh, out of the delta of uh, colors that I've already used uh, um, in the open neighborhood of V zero, I have basically used uh, delta minus one uh, colors. So there is one available color to color uh, V zero with. So therefore. Um, uh, the chromatic number of of H is um, at most delta of H colors. So therefore, you have this inequality chain. And you can clearly see that Brooks's theorem holds. Now, having said that, um, it is reasonable to ex expect that a graph with many edges has a large chromatic number. I mean, this is obvious. The denser you make the graph G it will definitely prevent you from using fewer colors. So there's a correlation between the density of a graph and the chromatic number. And that brings us to this theorem here, which states that um, you can actually find a lower bound for the chromatic number in terms of the size of a graph. Now to see this result, it's not difficult. You um, you uh, take a k coloring of the graph of of the graph G, and you let v1 up until v k be your color classes. Remember these sets v, they are all independent uh, 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 sets. Um, and uh, basically, you let uh, n i denote the uh, number, the order of each, um, um, the cardinality or the number of vertices in each uh, v i. Now, there are no edges between vertices in VI, as I said, because it's independent. Uh, but you could, uh, you, you only have edges between the sets uh, VI, uh, V1, V2, up until VK. Right, so there we've got our diagram. If we look at the first, ver if we look at the first vertex in the set W1, what is the, its maximum degree? It's max. It it is at the very worst. It is adjacent to all the vertices um, in the graph, with the exception of the vertices within the set V1. So basically, the the degree of W1 um, is at most n minus n1. And you can basically um, you can basically do that for every vertex in G. So um, so in general, um, if if x i is in v i, uh, then the degree uh, the degree of um, the degree of x i is at most in minus in i. So in total, um, so the total, so the total number of edges uh, incident. Incident with vertices uh, incident with vertices in VI is at most it's at most uh, in I in minus in I. Okay, so now in total, uh, if we were to add this all up, um, if we were to add this all up and work out the total, uh, the maximum total number of edges, 
um, that is pretty much going to be uh, you need to sum over all the ni's so basically uh, you need to go and work this sum out so you need to go and sum over all the i's so that's the total number the maximum number of edges okay and uh, by counting uh, yeah by counting by summing over the degree sequences of vertices you are at the very worst uh, you counting you count an edge uh, you count an edge uh, twice because an edge is incident with two vertices. So therefore twice the number of edges is at most this sum here and you can go and simplify that into that uh, and that. Now this little thing here is a function that you can go and minimize uh, because to find an upper bound uh, for m uh, we want this square term to be as small as possible to find uh, an upper bound. And uh, if you go and minimize it, it occurs when uh, each one of the um, uh, color classes has got exactly the same number of, of vertices, and th uh, that has to be n over k. Now, plugging n over k in there, back in, and simplifying. Uh, you can go and solve for k and find this nice little lower bound. Okay. Um, so obviously, through by investigation, if you increase m, uh, you decrease the uh, denominator, and by decreasing decreasing the denominator, obviously, uh, you are going to increase the uh, the chromatic number. Which is which is uh, which, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so if if the chromatic number if the chromatic number is small, uh, then obviously one would expect uh, g to have few edges. Uh, so its complement uh, will have many edges, and so one would expect the chromatic number of the complement to be large. So that. Uh, Give, uh, brings us to the following question: What is the uh, what's the maximum value that the sum between the chromatic numbers of G and the complement can become? And that is known as a nordaus gadam type problem, where you look at the parameter of a graph and its complement, and you look at the sum, the maximum value the sum can take on, and you also look at the maximum value that the product can take on. Um, and Nordaus Gottem results are quite widespread in uh, graph theory, uh, specifically with colors, with colorings. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, the, the trivial bounds are 2 and 2n two, uh, two respectively. Uh, the smallest the chromatic number of a graph can become is 1. So adding uh, the chromatic number of G and its complement is at least 2. And the largest the, the, the chromatic number of a graph G can become is um, n, and adding the, the 2 at, uh, is, uh, brings you to 2n at the, very, at the very most. But fortunately, uh, I mean, the, these bounds are not very good. One can actually go and do much better, which we'll discuss just now. Um, uh, we just need to look at the following result. Um, if G is a graph, uh, then the chromatic number of G is going to be 1 plus the maximum of delta of f where f goes uh, over the whole of g and f is a subgraph, right? So how we prove this is it's not difficult. Um, you take g to have chromatic number k and then remember we said g will have a k-critical subgraph somewhere. Call it h, right? Now we learned last week, recall that if G is color critical, then its chromatic number is at most its minimum, uh, its chromatic number minus one is at most its minimum degree. Going back here, the chromatic number of H is at most one plus its minimum degree by that uh, corollary. And the uh, minimum degree of, of H 
is at most the minimum degree of f where f uh, runs over all the subgraphs of g. Right, so therefore this result follows. So that brings us to this lo the last theorem, which is on uh, the nordhaus garam uh, result. So if g is a graph of order n, then the sum of the chromatic numbers of g and its complement is at most n plus 1, but it's at least uh, 2 square root of n. And 2 square root of n is way better than uh, 2, okay, which we previously said is a trivial lower bound. So to prove the lower bound is relatively straightforward. Uh, we look at the chromatic number of g and we look at the chromatic number of g uh, bar and we let it be k and l respectively. Then we look at the all the ordered pairs uh, of colors, right? So we look at the color uh, assigned to, um, uh, to v in g and the color assigned to v in g bar. Then we have the following relationship. For two vertices v and w in the vertex set, we have that these two ordered pairs um, are not equal uh, if v is not equal to w. Right, so let's take g and uh, let's just clarify that. If g, uh, we look at g and g bar, uh, we look at the two vertices v and w, they're different from one another. And uh, we, we, yeah, we say that v is not equal to w. And let's say um, those, two, uh, quant uh, those two ordered pairs are the same. So that means that um, the color that I assign to v must be the same as the color that I assign to w within g. So um, that, this is how it works. Right, so the color that I assign to v uh, is the same as the color that I assign to W within uh, G. Also the color that I assign um, the color that I assign to uh, V in the complement is the same as the color that I assign to W in the complement. So basically uh, we're going to assign uh, we're going to assign W the same color and uh, we are going to assign V the same color. Now what is the problem with this? The problem with this is that basically uh, we know what the co uh, complement uh, of a graph is. We know what the complement of a graph is, right? So. Um, if we have an edge in uh, in G, that's a problem because you can't have two adjacent vertices with the same color. Okay, so therefore the edge between V and W doesn't exist in G. But if it doesn't exist in G, it must exist in the complement. Okay, so therefore in the complement, um, V and W uh, are adjacent. So there, so that's also going to be a contradiction. So we can definitely not have that. So therefore, um, uh, it follows that then that we can definitely not have equality there. So those set of ordered pairs are um, distinct. Right, so these pairs are distinct. And there are n such pairs. These ordered pairs can take uh, uh, at most uh, k times l values because I've got k options for c of v and I've got l options for c complement of v. So therefore, um, so um, the number of pairs is at most k uh, l, which is the chromatic number of g times the chromatic number of g's complement. Now we know that for any two real numbers, the product of the two real numbers is always at most the sum of the 2 divided by 2 squared. 
So letting A be the chromatic number of G and letting B be the chromatic number of G's complement, we have then that this relationship holds. Okay? So uh, it follows then that the sum between the two uh, is... Um, Uh, is at least two times the square root of n. Right, so we look at the upper bound uh, of the sum between uh, the chromatic number of g and g bar. So what we do is we choose i to be a subgraph of g and we choose h bar to be a subgraph of g bar. And we just choose uh, i specifically uh, so that the um, so that the minimum degree of i is equal is actually equal to uh, that uh, max delta f where f uh, runs through the whole of g. So essentially what we're doing uh, is we're using, uh, we're pretty much using this result here. Uh, we go to uh, g bar and uh, that should just, that should be an f. Okay, and we let uh, delta of h bar just be uh, the max of delta f, where f runs through the whole of the complement of g. Okay. Now, uh, if we can show, if we can show that uh, delta i plus um, uh, delta uh, h bar is at most n minus one, um, then we know the chromatic number of g um, is at most one plus delta. Of i, and we know that the chromatic number of g bar is at most 1 plus delta of h bar. And if we add those two things together, if we look at uh, delta of g plus, not delta of g, um, uh, chi of g, uh, that is going to be at most. 2 plus n minus 1 if we can do that and that will be n plus 1 okay so that's all we need to do okay so we have the first case the case where the vertex sets of i and h bar um, don't share any vertices so delta of i plus delta of h bar um, is going to be at most, what is the minimum degree of i? It is at most the order of i minus 1. And what's the minimum degree of h bar? It's at most the order of h bar minus 1. That's obvious. And because they're two disjoint graphs, i and h, they both add up to n at most. And so the two uh, terms add up to at most n minus 2. Then the second case is where uh, vi and um, uh, vh bar share at least one vertex. So you take a vertex v in, in the intersection. And then you look at the degree of v within i and the degree of v within h bar. So the minimum degree of i is going to be um, at most the degree of v in l. That's obvious. And the minimum degree of h bar is going to be at most the degree of v within h bar. So that g bar should just be an h bar. Right, so basically, um, what do we know about the degree? Uh, what do we know about the degree of v and i? So the the degree of um, the degree of v and i is at most the degree of v in g. Okay, and we know the the degree of um, v in h bar is at most the degree of um, of v and g, okay, and so um, if we take these two terms, okay, um, and we go and add add them together. So if we look at that those terms there, and we go and add them together, right? We go and add that to 
uh, this term here, uh, we go and we add those ter two terms together there, right? Uh, that's going to be at most n minus 1. And the reason for that is, remember vertex V, uh, any neighbor of V in G is not going to be a neighbor of V in G bar. And any vertex that's not a neighbor of V in G is definitely going to be a neighbor of V um, in G bar. Right, so the... So you can see basically a Nordahl's garden problem as, as taking a complete graph and coloring it with two colors, a uh, red, uh, red color and a blue color. And uh, you cannot uh, color an edge uh, red and blue. You can only color it one color. So therefore, if you look at the degree of V, um, if G is the red graph and uh, the G bar um, is the blue graph, and then you can clearly see that the sum of the uh, the red edges incident with V uh, with the blue edges incident with V uh, is at most n minus 1. Okay, so that proves our uh, Nordhaus-Garam result. So that's at most n.